Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. Um, welcome to uh, Creative Ideas for Collaboration. We have three 20 minute great presentations um, for you. Um, we just ask, we're going to do 15 minutes of presentations, five minutes for questions at the end. Um, if you do have questions during the presentation, feel free to line up behind the microphone um, or just make sure when you ask your question, you're talking into the microphone. I can also pass it around um, if that's easier. Um, so our first presentation is Higher Education Institution Farm Tourism Initiatives, um, um, a academic community partnership the case of Central Baikal State University of Agriculture from the Philippines. Uh, Giselle Ann, please take it away. Thank you so much. I forgot to get your name. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. I hope you had a good uh, sleep last night. Um, once again, a pleasant morning to everyone. It's such a privilege uh, for me to share to you our paper entitled uh, Higher Education Institution Agritourism Initiative, the Academic Community Partnership, the case of Central Biko State University of Agriculture. So allow me first to give you an overview of the presentation. Um, the paper uh, explores how our state university pushes for the growth and development of farm tourism enterprise in the countryside. Um, for the past 10 years, uh, this, the CBSA or our university has been helping farmers to develop their farms into a tourism destination. And the goal is to illustrate how farms can generate additional income, promote um, environmental awareness and conservation and sustainability as well. So as a state university, uh, we are guided by our philosophy of being a community of scholars. Uh, engaged in creating and transmitting knowledge across a broad range of academic disciplines, uh, both in agriculture and industrial technology. Okay. So um, before anything else, allow me to introduce my our university. Okay. So I also have my own presentation in our Okay, so the CBSUA is located in the Bicol region. We pronounce it Bicol, not Bicol. Okay, and it is located at the southern part of the Philippines, um, the Luzon Island. It's the largest island in the archipelago. And the total land area is 5.9% uh, uh, land area, uh, the total land area of the country, and around 69.3%. Um, of the total land area is alienable and disposable to uh, disposable while the remaining 30.7% is a public forest. Okay. So um, there are actually three campuses in our university. Okay. So if you can see, we have the Sipokat campus, uh, Calabanga campus, and Pasakao campus, but I belong to the main campus, which is located at the, uh, again, southern part of uh, the Philippines. All right, so um, for the inception, okay, so um, this is a, just an overview. As far as our records is concerned in our country, CBSUA is the first and only university in the Philippines offering the degree in uh, bachelor's, uh, bachelor of Science in Agriculturism Management, and now it is uh, modified as BS Tourism Manage Management with major in Agritourism, okay. So in, 2000, in 2008, um, there is a noted decline in the trend, uh, trend in agricultural courses in our university. And we see that there's also an increasing growth of tourism in rural communities. So uh, we saw this an, as, as an opportunity to create innovative program that will address both the declining trends in agriculture and the increasing growth of tourism. Okay. So I'd like to acknowledge, of course, um, this is uh, through the effort of our former president, Dr. Georgina Bordado, along with her colleagues who crafted this um, very uh, unique program. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, uh, CBSA started to offer the, the program in 2008. And the program envisions that the small farmers be in the land management business and that the community must work together um, to help the income from this land just as they would in the heart of the city. And the program is also geared towards the development of professionals who initiate and actuate development goals through agri-ecotourism enterprises. 
So um, I'd like to share the, the contents of our curriculum. As a field of study, the program is a four-year science and management-based uh, program. And it is also an option that uh, can be developed as a valuable component of a business model to support many agricultural entities when the farm products they produce in our country are no longer economically viable. So it also, um, apart from that, it also it is also a study of courses that minimizes the negative aspects of conventional tourism in the environment. Um, there are, I think, four objectives of the program. First is, uh, the very objective of the program is to produce graduates who can develop and manage an agriculturism enterprises competing in a dynamic and global economy. <coughs> Our specific objective is uh, we have to, uh, students should be well oriented with agroecological management principles and of course their applications. And uh, that they should also be knowledgeable of basic and current agroecotourism concepts, issues, trends in uh, uh, both local and uh, international scene. Okay. And also uh, we have to, um, um, equip our students with skills in the operation and management of agriculturism enterprises. And lastly, you know, uh, that uh, values uh, for everyone is very important. So students should uh, have ingrained with a deep sense of values in the practice of their profession. So um, specifically, our graduates can work as agritourism site planner. They could also be an entrepreneur manager, uh, they can also be an uh, agritourism tour guide, event organizer, Should, can, they can also be a landscape designer, resort manager, and a community organizer or trainer for a rural-based agri-ecotourism. So you see, uh, these are the um, expected uh, job of our graduates because the program is a multifaceted program where all these um, aspects uh, are being trained to them. <coughs> So I'd like to share our agritourism in our university. Uh, currently, you know, agriculture and tourism both plays a major role in the economic growth and the cultural and development of the country, not, uh, not, uh, not only in our country, but all over the world, okay? So in, in, in our country, agriculture generates the biggest employment uh, for over uh, 12 million Filipinos involved, okay? That's according to our Philippine Statistics Authority. And as of 2016, um, employment in tourism characteristics industries was estimated at 5.2 million Filipinos. Okay. So um, I think everybody knows, knows this um, since 1990s, there's a new uh, type of rural tourism. We call it agritourism in the concept of agritourism. Okay. So our country being in a tropical, our country is a tropical country and being in a tropical country uh, and by, uh, with rich biological di uh, diversity, and I would like to believe that uh, most of our, the, uh, our fellow uh, Filipinos uh, is good in speaking English, uh, our, our country is believed to be well positioned for agritourism. Okay? So um, in our university, we have two uh, farm tourism uh, sites. Okay? But uh, I'd like to highlight this one. This is the organic agriculture. Um, located within our campus. And I am proud to say that uh, this organic agriculture center in our university is accredited by uh, the Department of Tourism, that's a government agency in the Philippines, accredited as one of the agritourism sites uh, in, uh, in our region. And there's another one, um, it's actually an ongoing project. Mm -hmm. We are um, developing the CBSA Agriville, which also caters to uh, tourists Okay. And most of the technologies that the students are um, being uh, invented will be um, um, showcased to that um, uh, that farm. Okay. So um, farm tourism industry is being pushed by our government through the passing of the Republic Act. 10816, uh, also known as an act providing uh, for the de development of and promotion of farm tourism in the Philippines. Okay? So you see that our government is very supportive in uh, agritourism endeavor. Okay, 
So this is, I believe, the exciting part, what we do in that uh, curriculum, in that program. Okay? There are a lot of um, um, uh, subjects being offered in the, in the course. However, I'd like to highlight this one because um, personally, this one is my favorite. I'm the one who teaches this uh, subject. It's, a, it's a Project 105, or we call it Site Development. So we do a lot of um, activities here. We have a lecture series, uh, farm community adaptation, farm con tourism conceptualization, and lastly is the practical application of what uh, the students learn from the four corners of the room. Okay? This is uh, part of the program. Okay? So just like any other universities have, we have uh, one semester uh, for this specific subject and uh, I believe uh, there are five months. So the first two months will be allotted to lectures only. Okay? So the students should learn the principles and concepts and trends in agritourism, the fundamentals for two months. And the last three months should be uh, their practical application. So you see the, the pictures there are uh, my students, my former students who conceptualize uh, agritourism um, development. Okay? So again, um, students are equipped, are being equipped with the concept and fundamentals of agri-tourism. Okay? Students, um, for the practical application, after they, they learn uh, in two months, uh, students would go to a farm site or a community and would practically, uh, will practically apply the learnings they obtain, okay? uh, the theoretical learnings they obtain inside the four corners of the room. Okay? So, so that's what we do. Okay, so this is just an example of farm tourism site that the students have developed. Okay. This is just one uh, example. Okay, so this is located in uh, Baal Camarines Sur in our province, this, this Monte Farm. So I'm showing you this because uh, the, the landscape, the physical aesthetic or the physical uh, development of that part was conceptualized by the students. Okay, so another example. Okay, so that's another example. You know, uh, this is not a, a grand, as grand as what your farms have, but what I am proud to say here is that the concepts here are implemented and conceptualized by the student themselves. So we act, uh, we as educators, we act as facilitators, but the main concept should be coming from the ideas of the student. Okay. So another, uh, another example, okay. Um, I'd like to share this one is my favorite because you see the before picture you, you can you you, uh, you cannot uh, you see nothing I mean um, the crops or the plants are not uh, very well organized but in three months they get to manage to develop the place physically so I even gave them a high score <laughs> <laughs> yes perfect score rather <laughs> okay so, right, right. Okay. Uh, the development of the site physically put tourism aspects and made the farm into something worth um, visiting. Oh, let me go back to that slide. Okay. So, um, apart from the physical development of the site, is that students also get to. Um, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, practically apply not only the physical development, the concepts of uh, agritourism, but also, um, um, like as I mentioned earlier, they also have other subjects like culinary, they also have event management, they have resort management operations. So, the practical application, uh, it's a multi um, faceted, yeah, the holistic approach is being implemented in the farm. So, you see, uh, this one is a choco farm. And students are able to um, showcase their uh, unique talents by um, uh, by doing these activities, um, selling uh, their products, their produce to the customers, and they even they um, they earn income for it. Okay. <clears throat> the students were also able to learn uh, other uh, operations in the farm tourism, culinary, okay. and uh, others. Okay, so another example in 
Um, the site development activity is part of the innovations introduced using the outcomes-based uh, teaching pedagogy. And the activity, uh, the site development activity is, <coughs> excuse me, um, intended to develop uh, particular farm tourism sites into farm tourism destination. Okay. So. All right, so these are just uh, some of the list of the activities that the students as well as the visitors um, managed to do or uh, able to do on the farm uh, on the project. Okay, so students get to be a tour guide, they conducted seminars or farm demonstrations. Um, they are also able to exhibit their food, uh, pick and pay, just like what you also do in your um, farm, go to wood fishing, rafting, if there's available activity for that. They also do mud sliding <laughs> and a tree planting and other unique agriculture and experiences. So you see uh, some of us in our country see these things as an ordinary experience like the mud slide. And, and some of the students actually do not want to get dirty. Okay? <laughs> but for the tourists, this is something extraordinary. <clears throat> okay, so another... Um, uh, activities are resort and restaurant operations, tour guiding activities, site development, and social marketing as well. So there's still more pictures here. They also get to display souvenirs. Um, one thing that I am proud of them also is that um, these souvenir items are um, uniquely made by the students. So they do not get, uh, they do not buy products from other stores. They are the one who made these products and sell it to the uh, customers for the visitors. Okay. So really an exerted effort from the students. Okay, so we also have these uh, culinary experience. Um, uh, one way uh, or one of the primary reasons why people go to farm or to agritourism destination is to experience rural life. Okay? So we give it to them. Uh, you know that it is more desirable to have food served on the table representing the local culture. Okay. So I told my students, you do not just cook food, but you cook it uh, from your heart. You have to show the, the authenticity, the local uh, food that uh, the, the community is being produced. Okay. So through the farm uh, table uh, movement or activity of the students, students are not only the benefactors here as consumers, but also the local community, especially the farmers, okay? the farmers of the uh, small land owners. Okay? So they are given the chance to experience a better way of living and um, they are also encouraged, encouraged to plant uh, more and have a broader sense of pride as farmers. <laughs> okay. Another activity is promotion of agritourism through events management. Events management is one of the subjects uh, taken by the students, but this is not just an ordinary event because the event should have a touch of cultural, a touch of culture, showing the cultural um, backgrounds in the community. So they are promoting culture through agritourism events management. Okay. And also, um, over the years, um, over the years, uh, we have been uh, exposed to media uh, so as to promote the agritourism in our country. So um, people there are amazed by the uh, output of our students. Okay, they also get to you know the pop up restaurant. Uh, they do they do this in the university. Okay? So they get to manage a resort operation, and the students there are really acting as if they are really managers. Uh, re they are servers or waiters. They are um, cook experts. So they tend to experience a lot aside from the, the internship that they uh, do in uh, in the curriculum or in the program. Okay? So this is a pop up um, restaurant within the university. Okay, so they are the ones who do this. Okay, so I'm showing this to you because I'd like you to know that all the structures in the farm operate, farm resort operations are again made by the students. So they, they don't pay for a laborer to do these things for them. They even um, uh, uh, make their own table and chairs for the restaurant. 
All right. So for our extension work, Okay, okay. So I'm just I'm going to wrap this up. Okay. So one important aspect in the agritourism industry is the community involvement. So it's important for us that we have uh, um, conducting uh, we are conducting rather um, seminars and workshops for the community. So uh, community is able to participate in consultations, um, resource mapping, and planning and development. Okay. So these are the linkages that we have with the local government units and um, community as well. All right. So um, according to Pian Santino, there are advantages of university and industry partnership. Okay, so these are uh, what the academy academies to offer and what the industry offer to academ academies. So that's it. All right. Um, I'd also like to highlight the government support. Okay, in our country, there is a strong support from the government, particularly the agencies, Department of Tourism and Department of Agriculture. Cynthia Villar, the one who is uh, uh, the picture, she says that now is really the perfect time to look into and seize the numerous opportunities in farm tourism. She is actually the, uh, the, uh, the author of the Farm Tourism Act, an act developing and promoting farm tourism in uh, the country. Okay? Now for the metal learning, uh, for the college, we continue to review and improve the curriculum to enhance students' appreciation. We also cultivate our relationship between the universities and the private businesses, private farms. And of course, we have to um, include the participation of the community and the non-government agencies and even the church-based um, community. Okay? And for the community, we believe that as a development strategy, the agritourism development can contribute to the socioeconomic uh, improvements in local uh, barangays and municipalities. And of course, uh, like as one of you know, uh, we preserve also the cultural heritage and academic or private institutions capacity building trainings are needed and that um, we have to replicate and adopt this uh, uh, to each our household in the community. Okay. Now I think this will be the last few slides. Um, for the challenges, um, we have to enhance our research papers on agritourism and that the farmers or farm owners venture to agritourism enterprise are somehow uh, challenging because some of them do not want to uh, involve or maybe they do not know what is agriculture is all about okay so community acceptance increasing visitors you also have to do more skills training on agriculture and there is a high vulnerability of agriculture communities to climate change most especially our country is very prone to typhoons so farmers really uh um find it hard to cultivate okay and poor compensation in tourism industry, admitted or not, in our country. I don't know in other countries. Now, I'm uh, sorry, for the last slide, um, uh, the road ahead. Okay? So um, the trajectory shows that um, our partnership with our community is far from over. Okay? And we have committed to the continued support of agritourism in the development by involving our students and the different units of the university in our activities. Okay, so that would be all for my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Ms. Thank you so much, Giselle. Um, next up, we have Finger Lake Lakes Farm Country, the creation and maintenance of a collaborative interdisciplinary online agritourism presence, a case study in rural upstate New York. For questions, we ran out of time, but you can post them on the Q&A in Whova along with looking at additional bio bios. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Arlene Wilson and I'm here to tell you about Finger Lakes Farm Country. So thank you for your time and attention. Okay. 
Okay. And so Finger Lakes Farm Country is a collaborative of five counties in the uh, central kind of southern part of uh, New York State. Uh, we would say upstate New York, but since we're in Vermont, it's more Western New York. So we're more West of where we are right now. And so um, what we wanted to do in this was to create a website to increase awareness of our region and to bring more traffic to the website and increase downloads from our app. And so we are located here in this part of New York State. And one thing that we uh, really understood was in our local markets uh, were Chemung County, Schuyler, Steuben, Tioga, and Yates. Um, we're looking to bring more traffic to our areas. And with the infrastructure of New York State highways, some new highways were built. So we're getting more traffic across the southern part of the state, which was new for us. And so we wanted to capture that traffic and have people stop, whether it's for a rest break, a bio break, give the dog a walk, the kids are restless. And when they stop, they need to have some information of what's available. And so that was our mission. And so each county has uh, a tourism promotion agency, chamber of commerce that do a lot of marketing, but they marketed to the wine and craft beer industries. They marketed to the ski resorts. They marketed to the summer vacation rentals, but they really didn't have a knowledge about agriculture. So a decision in the nexus of this was to work with Cooperative Extension that has the relationship with growers to then bring that knowledge and that expertise into a regional marketing strategy. And so you can see from the marketing strategy, um, we, we did a lot of work in terms of finding out um, through discussion surveys, um, what are the different ways that we could increase the market activity and the awareness. Um, and then we also had research from the tourism promotion agencies of where does the traffic come from? So we have the East West, but we also have the North South. So because of where we're located, we get a lot of day trippers, we call them from Rochester, from Syracuse. We don't get Buffalo, we don't get farther East. So we're trying to reach out to those markets. And then we get people going to uh, New York City, uh, Philadelphia and Cleveland. And so these are the people we're trying to entice to stop and learn more about our region. Okay, and so we took multiple platforms, of course, the traditional uh, print uh, brochures, posters, uh, rack cards, um, and uh, ads in uh, key magazines like Finger Lakes magazines. We also had social awareness and social media websites, and again, trying to drive traffic to that and increase likes. Um, and then we also created a video, and as well as creating a tour and trails app. Okay, and so I love this picture. I'm biased because this is in my county, Yates County, and this is Spotted Duck Creamery. So if you've ever in the Finger Lakes area and you want some ice cream, what they did that was very unusual, most people are familiar with wine flights and beer flights, which are little samples. They have an ice cream flight. Yes, so you can get, yes, and you see there's multiple spoons. So you can get um, the big flight, which is 12 samples to share. It's a good day, good day. Okay, and so this five county collaboration, these are the counties and I represent uh, Yates County for Cooperative Extension and uh, my peer from Tioga County is here, T. Hansen, thank you. And I'm trying to see, I don't think anybody else is from our collaboration is here. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. And Jessica Thatcher, uh, wave your hand, um, from Yates County Chamber of Commerce and Rebecca from uh, Tioga Chamber of Commerce and uh, the leader, the Brain Trust and former collaboration partner, Kevin Costello, wave, uh, came with this great collaborative idea, but he's left us for sunnier environs in Virginia. <laughs> Okay, and so we were fortunate enough um, under uh, Kevin's leadership to apply for a grant through the Appalachian Regional Commission. Um, that's another one of those federal governmental entities. And as you see, we're in this Southern tier 
region. So some of our counties were in that, some are kind of half. They made a, a little exception for Yates. We got a waiver. And so we applied for funding to put this together. And so we had had some past uh, experience working together on the cooperative extension side. As you can see, we um, actually had done some um, TV, uh, little quick commercials for morning traffic um, information out of uh, one of our cities in that area. And that collaboration went very well where we talked about horticulture and agriculture and each of the counties brought that expertise that they have. So again, we realized, wow, we could work together and there's a, there's a power in collaboration. And so when this opportunity came up, it's like, yeah, we've done that before, let's do that again. And so now with the Finger Lakes Farm Country, um, we have the telephone app and most of you who have a smartphone, you have the Hoover app, right? You're here at the conference. And so this is another uh, farm app that helps you create your own travel experience. So if you have your smartphone, download the Finger Lakes Farm Country app and take a look. So you can see since this app launched just over a year ago, we've had 408 downloads, over 1,000 sessions, over 8,000 page views, and 1,000 total active users. One of the things that's really helped all of us, and you've heard this multiple times in these presentations, and I'll say the same thing, COVID has been that mixed blessing when it's come to travel and agritourism and exploring rural areas, it has been a blessing. So everyone is curious about what's available and any place they can gather outside uh, in small numbers that don't have big crowds, everybody is all about that. So this is a really good opportunity uh, for that. And um, we haven't reached a peak at this. So I think um, it's all upside at this point. Okay. And so again, this is just a, a screenshot of the app. So again, how a person would kind of plan their trip. Um, some people are very uh, specific and want to know uh, something for everyone. If you're traveling with small children, you might want to go uh, berry picking and go to a you pick operation. You may want to find a park that's dog friendly so you can walk your dog and you may want to get some adult beverages. Um, somebody mentioned kombucha, I'm a fan of kombucha. And so you may want to see what's along the route. So there's something for everybody. Or people are just impulse travelers. In my house, we're just impulse. We're like, mm, we want to stop. Okay, Arlene, pull up a pull up a map and find something interesting to stop and see and do. You got 40 minutes. And so, you know, having that app is the perfect solution for that. Okay. And again, it's portable. You can take it with you as you're planning your trip, as you're finding things and you see something else along the way. Okay. I had submitted a poll question um, and I got a good number of answers to that. Um, really wanting to find out how people uh, utilize online searches. So we're going to come out of the presentation real quick. Okay. All right. And so this shows you that uh, what websites people use to spur of the moment outings. And so, you know, Google Maps is a key one, but know what is right uh, behind there is local tourism sites as well as other. So this is a really good opportunity and a good time to really invest in those local tourism websites to promote those. And we found that our region has benefited from those as well. Um, what, what's interesting, because um, we're here in Vermont and it was interesting to hear Vermont doesn't have counties. So you kind of have regions of Vermont, but you don't really. So this isn't as much a challenge for you, but for those of you from other places, um, you know and see that sometimes each region has the things it's known for, whether it's the water or it's the fruit or it's the dairy and the cheese. And so it's really important that people work as a region um, and find ways to collaborate. It's very easy to focus on the small scale, my town, my my province uh, and to not understand that when people travel, they don't look at it that way. So I, I have one story I'd like to share where I was trying to um, touch base with the new owner of a local winery. So I dropped by and they weren't in. So of course I had to go and 
get a flight of wine, sample some things and chat up some people. So I'm heading back to the car and there's these two ladies and they're saying, you know, we're here for a weekend and we're exploring, but we don't know where to go. You know, we, we can see the wineries on the, we got the wine trail, but what else is there? And I'm like, so glad you asked. We have a Yates County uh, food guide called the Taste of Yates. And I had a box in my car. So I, I go and I give them the book and they're like, oh, this is great. And you've got, okay, we can stop at this one place and get some hot dogs. It's locally processed called a wienery. And we can stop over here and get some candy. And then the other lady says, but what about the other side of the lake? I said, well, that's not my county. That's a different <laughs> county. And she said, well, we're here to hang out at the lake. And the lake is, you know, kind of a, a long, narrow lake at Seneca Lake. And says, so well, we're going to go down Route 14A, and we're going to end up at one end, and we're going to have dinner at one end, and we're going to come back up the other side in hotels at the top of the lake. So you're not helping us, mm -hmm. because you really, your map only covers like 40%. I'm like, well, you know, it's really two counties, you know, so the top of the lake is a different county and, and the other side is different county and they're like, you guys need to get over this county thing and you need to just promote the whole area. And I'm like, mm, I've just been told. <laughs> and so, you know, that story has stuck in my mind. So when this opportunity to collaborate came along, I'm like, yeah, we, we really need to do that. We need to stop looking at where the lines are and that's not my side of the road and all of that because that's not how tourists look. Okay. 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 So we now have evolved uh, with our website. Um, so we have the website and we have the Finger Lakes Farm Country app. So again, you can explore by topical areas, you can create a trip plan and you can map it. So um, if you're interested in farmer's markets, you can just focus on those. If you're interested in the UPICs, you can focus on those. If you're interested in the farm state and the farm on farm experience, you can focus on those. Okay, and we also created a video which is not going to play. Did I crash this? Okay, it's loading. All right. So the video gives you an overview of the website and kind of gives you the feeling of what it would be like traveling through the Finger Lakes. There's some lovely pictures of uh, a family doing the you picks and at the petting zoo and petting goats. We have a lot of goats in the Finger Lakes and people love goats. And then we have a thing and T Hanson, you can ask her about it is goat yoga. And I thought it was a joke when people said that but it's a thing where people actually will do yoga and there's these little baby goats frolicking and climbing on your back and people just think it's a wonderful thing. And you have to book early for goat yoga because it fills up fast. And so you have all these different experiences that are available to you. And having a video, again, is another way to tell your story. So the website is uh, that kind of constant uh, resource that's available. The app is interactive, but sometimes you're like on the fence. Do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? And having that video is a great way to tell the story and to share that opportunity. And if you have any platforms where you're presenting to legislators, you have opportunities to post things on television or social media, having that finished, polished um, two minute presentation is the ticket. If we don't have it, we can skip over that. Okay, so we're not doing the video. Quick question, how do farmers get on that trail? 
on the project one side. Okay, so this is the relationship with extension. So we uh, reach out to farmers uh, every year to in the non-growing season um, to tell them about the apps and information about it. We uh, have promotional materials that are um, for the public, but they're also for growers. So they become aware of it. Um, and then having the relationship, this is a way for us to, to talk it up and to kind of upsell it because what we're finding is the growers who have larger enterprises, they have their own website. They have a marketing person, they have a newsletter person, but the smaller enterprises don't. And so if they had to choose between spending money and time on developing a website and social media or buying farm equipment, farm equipment always wins. And so for us to be able to provide this and they can just sign on is like a win-win for them. And so we have um, our pop-up display, uh, which has a little awning and roof. And you've seen some of our, uh, our table skirt and our flags in the uh, promotional area. We also have a brochure. Um, and I, I will share uh, one learning was that we wanted to make sure that in the brochure, we had some multicultural representation and that representation matters. And we've learned, I will share your story, Jessica, sorry, that uh, uh, from one of our uh, partners that, um, that that learning has translated into other publications and that when we ask for feedback and we see more diverse audiences coming to rural areas that don't have a lot of diverse residents, it's because they're seeing diversity in the promotional materials. And so they feel that there's a safety factor there and that, that you're welcome. And as, a, as an African-American woman, I, I live in an urban area and I commute to the rural area for my job. And I'm always asked, is it safe there? Could we come here? Could we come and do a wine tour? Could we do a, a hiking trail? Would it be okay? And so that's real. And so it's important to understand that and make sure you're creating a welcoming environment for all people to come and enjoy your region. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get into that. Okay, and so you see from the brochure, it shows you the different uh, topical areas. So we have fiber, we have Christmas trees, we have equine, um, we have farm stays, we also have nature sweetness. We have a lot of honey producers in our area and maple producers. So. Uh, if people are looking for that, we have that. We also have local meats. Um, it was amazing to me that local meats was a thing. And I was like, didn't really pay attention to it until COVID came. And I got so many queries about local meats. And so I don't know in your communities, but in our communities, the supermarkets didn't have meat. And the only places that had meat were the local producers. And so again, business card holders, app download cards. And again, as you can see, we've had a, a increase in our website performance and social media performance. Um, and so again, in our partnership, we make sure, um, you know, one of our associations, which is Steuben County Visitor and um, Tourism Bureau took responsibility for the social media uh, management and the website management. So again, when you create these things, you have to populate them and you have to have good content and you have to make sure you're working well as a team. So we meet uh, monthly, sometimes every other month. So we're up on the data, we're up on what are the new events? What are the new activities? How are our numbers with uh, farmers and growers? Do we need to add more? Um, and what things can we do to continue to improve? Um, and so you'll see um, the, the website, again, we're having a lot of sessions. Um, we've also expanded into Instagram. Um, and so we're seeing a huge increase in uh, engagements. Um, and more stats, and she gave me the high five. So that's it. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And you can find out more about Arlene on Whova. And unfortunately, we ran out of time for questions. Sorry about that. But again, the Whova app, the Q&A. Um, so next up, we have Kingdom Farm and Food, the successes and challenges of a coordinated agritourism campaign in Vermont's rural northeast corner. Thank you. Take it away.
So if I do up or down or how down. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. All right. Um, so my name is Bethany Dunbar. I have a background in dairy farming and journalism. And before I went to work for the Center for an Agricultural Economy, which is a small nonprofit based in Hardwick. Um, and the CAE was started in 2004 by a group of local food entrepreneurs who wanted more for their community than their own thriving businesses. They really wanted things to grow more. This is um, our magical carrot, we call it. <laughs> um, and there's promotional materials on the table. We have a table. And my colleague, Lily Rokosinski, here in the front, has put together this slideshow for us. Um, so my job at the Center for Ag is about food access, food justice, community programs like the community gardens, the farmer's market, and school programs. And part of that is managing a 15-acre property that the Center for Ag owns called Atkins Field in Hardwick. Um, and as part of that, we um, have had uh, many events there. Um, so in, oh, the other thing I want to mention is I wrote a book and here's the book. It's 10 years old, um, so I can't sell it anymore. So anyone who wants one can have it. But when I was in journalism, I did a lot of photography and interviews with local farmers. And this is a guidebook for our region. Um, so it's still kind of interesting. Hopefully someone might want one. <laughs> um, all righty. So this map is shows the Northeast kingdom, which, um, you're right about, we do have counties, but they're not very strong. They're there are physical counties, but they don't have a much government or anything. But we do have this region in Vermont, which we call the Northeast Kingdom. It's the three most uh, remote counties. They're the poorest and they're the least populated. And um, they have a lot there, I, I like to say they're rich in natural resources and resilient people with agriculture and a value for the natural world at the core. The population of all three counties is 70,000, which is half of what Chittenden County, the county that you're in right now. So all three counties are less than half of this county. Um, this is unceded land of the Abenaki and we, their existence was threatened when white settlers came in. Um, we like to say, please respect and protect our friends. The Chief Don Stevens says, please respect and protect this land as Abenaki land. We as white farmers and landowners owe the, our ancestors a debt of rematriation and um, to honor that history. These maps were printed in 2015 as a way to, when we did our regional event, um, as a way for people to find each other. The cell service is not awesome and the Wi-Fi is not always there. So this map was this big and you could tear it off of a pad. All of the farms that participated had these. And so if you stopped at one, you pick up the pad and you can go on to the next one and find it, even if your map doesn't work. Um, a lot of the photos are photos that I took of our region. This, these photos are Jay Peak and Willoughby Gap. Um, and just to emphasize how beautiful our region is, tourism has always been an important economic force in Vermont since at least the early 1900s. Um, sheep and cow dairies have been the main agricultural revenue um, and Vermont was even a mainstay for fresh apples in 1900 according to the Vermont Encyclopedia. 
That book was published in 2003 and it has well-researched entries for agriculture, skiing, all kinds of tourist related things, but the word agritourism does not uh, exist in 2003 Vermont Encyclopedia. Why? As the farmers like to say, you can't milk the view. So, you know, the view is awesome, but it's not going to bring you any money on its own. And you have to work on this agritourism connection. So, um, the tourists were always flocking to our beautiful state to see the cows on the side of a hill. And that would bring revenue for hotels and restaurants and tourism facilities. But most dairy farmers prices, including myself when I was in that work, were set by a convoluted, a convoluted federal system based on markets in Minnesota and Wisconsin. The system is still in place. Um, if you're a conventional dairy, you're in that system and you have no ability to set your price. You just take the price that's given to you. Um, that was started after World War II um, as a way to ensure that everyone could get milk. So it was good intentions, but it's a terrible system. Um, this is uh, an example of agritourism in Vermont in the early 1900s. This is in a book that is the history of Greensboro, which is a very strong tourist community in the Northeast Kingdom. And, you know, you can see the, the wagons. And um, so we have agriculture, we have tourism, they're connected. But um, as a trend, in 1969, Vermont had 4,017 dairy farms. And in 2020, it had 636. So you can see that what was happening, smaller farms were selling out to larger ones and everyone was struggling to make any money. So the organization that I work for, some of the entrepreneurial farmers and food business owners were scheming, how can we solve these problems? How can we create a different way of living off of the land and making a living with the land. Um, this is a tradition, this is a long tradition. We didn't invent it um, because a lot of dairy farmers had always sold pulp in the winter for an extra income to make paper or tapping the maple trees to make maple syrup in the spring. So the diversification is not brand new. It was a value that our people had, we're resilient. Um, so there, the conversation grew. Could we add value by processing on the farm and selling directly to consumers? Could we take advantage of higher prices offered by the organic market? Could revenue streams include tourism? Um, there's no one size fits all with farmers as I'm sure a lot of you know. <laughs> so each farm had to figure out its own strategy. For some who could manage, a website for maple products, bed and breakfast, this agritourism item started to grow, but um, it's not for everyone, but we could see the potential of it. The, North, the National Organic Farming Association created an online resource guide for consumers who wanted to buy organic products. Vermont Fresh Network started certification product uh, process for restaurants. So if you had that local food in your restaurant, you could get that sign in the window. Community supported agriculture share programs and farmers markets developed as a way to meet your farmer, look her in the eye and say, you grew this and it's good food. Um, the Center for an Agricultural Economy worked with Northeastern Vermont Development Association, which is our regional planning group and several others to create a regional food plan to build on what was already in our region and to find the gaps and start filling them. So this art on the left is the cover of that plan, which was actually published in 2016. It was worked on for several years before that. And on the right, we have 
a mural which is on the wall at the nonprofit where I work, um, created by Tara Garo, who's an amazing mural artist, just a visual depiction of the food system. Could we have our own food system? So we have the soil, we have the restaurants, we have everything happening locally. One of the entrepreneurs who started the Center for Ag is named Tom Stearns and his business that he had started is High Mowing Organic Seeds, um, which is an amazing, amazing business. Um, and there was a tradition among seed companies of holding field days for the farmers who were growing for that seed company. And so you would have some workshops and you would have a big meal so this, this event that Tom started um, got bigger and bigger. He worked with the New England Culinary Institute and many local farmers and started putting on a huge meal, um, which the images show the New England Culinary Institute interns putting the meal together. And that line is all the people who came to for that meal. So people were coming from all over the world, literally, it was, it grew into a 500 person free gourmet meal in a field under a tent, um, including rooftop farmers from Brooklyn showing up to camp in a van. And uh, so the, the event really began to outgrow high mowing itself. High mowing wouldn't, couldn't keep this up and it could, but also could see the huge potential and the huge interest in how much people would want to come to something like this. So Tom Stearns brought this to the CAE and said, what can we do? Let's do something bigger. How are we going to take advantage of this? And that is how our regional agritourism effort started and we called it Kingdom Farm and Food Days. Um, it started in 2009. And so at first it was a couple of farms. Um, the high mowing event was kind of the center. So we tried to arrange everything. So it was just all around that neighborhood almost. Um, so these are some images from Kingdom Farm and Food Days, the pigs at Sterling College. Um, we had draft animal demonstrations, llamas and so on. And that's actually Tom in that photo on the left. <clears throat> At its peak, Kingdom Farm and Food Days had two dozen farms and food businesses all offering open houses and farm tours. Meanwhile, our, at CAE, we started our own event as part of Kingdom Farm and Food at Atkins Field, the property that I manage. And one year we did it just separately. And that, it turned out, would make much more sense to do it during the farmer's market, which is already there on Fridays. So um, for after that first year, we did it in conjunction with the farmer's market. And we had demonstrations of basket making, blacksmithing, wood woodworking, fiber arts, and other traditional crafts. And meanwhile, Kingdom Farm and Food was in the Eden ice cider uh, orchard tours. People could try the ice cider, which is amazing. And um, they could just go to all the farms around the region and try their products and see how they do them. So in around the same time, the state of Vermont began um, promoting Open Farm Week. Actually, ours, I'm going to say we're going to take credit. We were ahead. <laughs> we were doing ours before Open Farm Week. Um, five years after ours started, the state started, and um, they began, and everyone was recognizing the potential of promoting to tourists the importance and uniqueness of Vermont's farming culture. And so the first Open Farm Week was 2014. Ours was just a weekend. Open Farm Week was a whole week, and it was statewide. Um, so at first we said, well, we'll keep ours going and we'll do it the same week so that people will come to both. And we were making all the farmers sign up for two things. And 
it got a little convoluted, I will say, because the state had the power to really promote and make it bigger. Also, in some ways, we're different from New York in that Vermont is so small that if we get tourists in the Northeast Kingdom, they're going to come over to Burlington because it's not very far away. So there is a logic to promoting the whole state as opposed to the three counties. <clears throat> We, for but for I think two years, we maintained both. We encouraged people to sign up for both. And then we began to wonder if that was really the right way to uh, go about it. <clears throat> so in 2017 and 2018, we surveyed our farmers. We said, is this working for you? Is this what you want? How is, is it helping you? Um, should we continue our regional event or should we work with the state and merge basically? Our survey results showed in our regional event that we had average attendance of about 128 people. But when we asked them about um, their revenue streams, most said there was no revenue stream. So in 2018, we added a second question to our survey. Why do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it was very, you know, this is a very small survey. I'm not a research scientist, but I can say that anecdotally, I think these answers were accurate. 40% said they did it for community service. 20% um, said for revenue. 20% said to build their brand. So, you know, revenue in the future. And 20% said all of the above. So basically, you know, there's a lot of reasons to do it, but, um, making money was not the top of the list. Um, I'm here to say, I feel like it should be. I feel like, I, you know, I've been trying to promote the concept of farmers should get paid for stopping everything they're doing and showing people how to milk a cow. And so this, this is, uh, I think that no one is farming to make money. I mean, I don't know any farmer who is like, oh, I'm gonna make a killing at this. Farmers farm because they love to farm and because they want to feed the world. Um, so if you ask them to open their farm, they're going to do it. But I feel like for those of us who are encouraging agritourism, it really, it's really important to say, okay, so what are you going to charge for that? <laughs> there's my little, there's my little uh, spiel. Um, so anyway, these photos are from our event in Hardwick. Meanwhile, while this was going on, our event in Hardwick was building up. And we were in 2018, we had about 300 people coming. And by in this past August, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, we had more than 450 you know, kind of hearkening back to those 500 people in a field. But in this case, they're coming to the farmer's market. so. Hopefully, they're also spending money. Um, I don't have, I wish I had uh, sales for you today. I don't have that yet. I'm hoping to have it later. Check back. But um, it definitely draws more people. They're seeing the farmers. They're, they're learning with these demonstrations, but they're also having a chance to purchase. Um, so this is... Um, the, the theme is, you know, collaborations and challenges. When I think about the benefit of collaborations, I think of high mowing in the first place, deciding to go to other farmers nearby, let's build this thing. Um, I think of collaborating with the state for Open Farm Week, which let's face it, has more resources than our little region and can really build it up, which they have. Um, and when I think about the challenges, I think about sort of the winding road we took to arrive at a place that feels feels better. Um, and, you know, the challenges of what do farmers want? How do we serve them? Um, but uh, I would say that our event has grown. We really love it. We have a great time. This photo is um, a photo of taste tests of heritage tomatoes. So we have 10 different types of heritage tomatoes. People can taste them. They vote for their favorite. The winning tomato gets a little crown. <laughs> so 
come see it. <laughs> I'm here to invite you. Um, yeah, and just thank you. Uh, I just, this conference has been incredible. Thank you to everyone who's put it together for us. Um, and I have learned so much and thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with you. Um, I hope that it's helpful. And do we have time for questions? Oh, we're done. Sorry. Thank you.